I want to welcome you back. It's been quite some time since we had a little talk, but I feel that now may be the time to bring up some items that some of you may not be familiar with, items that are relevant to the days that we find ourselves in. The title of this short video is Reprobate, and I refer to it from the Book of Romans. In chapter 1, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The definition of this word from the King James Bible is as such, disapproved with abhorrence, rejected, abandoned to wickedness or to destruction. This word is also found in another verse in the scriptures, in Titus 1, verse 16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. I would ask you to consider two things here. In the verse in Romans, the Holy Spirit through Paul's writings is showing us that they did not like to retain God in their knowledge inferring that at one time those that he is speaking about had at least a rudimentary knowledge of the Almighty and his desires for all men. In the verse in the book of Titus it is made even more clear for us. These people spoken of here actually profess that they know God, but their works deny him. It is my firm belief and the belief of others who serve the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of God, that the judgment of God has fallen, not just on certain individuals in these evil days that we find ourselves in, not only upon certain nations, but upon the entire planet. This is based on the fact that many, far too many, have indeed been given over to a reprobate mind, it is my hope that you will not find this video tedious or simply the ramblings of an old man, for I believe that it is very important. In fact, we may be living in one of the most important times in the history of man, the beginnings of sorrows. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, the context is from verse 24 through 32 and it speaks of the results of man's rebellion against God. Man's degeneration is many times measured by his perversion of sex. Idolatry and gross immorality are the bitter fruits of rejecting God's revelation. It is quite clear to those who have been blessed with eyes to see and ears to hear that the lowest depths of moral degradation is becoming rampant across the planet. We are living in days where mankind is plunging deeper and deeper into their own selfish desires. These that we are speaking of have an inner knowledge of God. They persist in these practices despite the witness of their own conscience. They are not only in fellowship with evil, but with other evil doers. The fires, floods, earthquakes, the unprecedented weather events that are occurring across the planet, that which is being termed climate change, bios who have been given over to the reprobate mind we are addressing, are in their own way signs. Warnings from the Almighty, the Prince of the Power of the Air, the God of this world, our adversary is being allowed to exhibit his power in this respect. But it is idolatry, mankind denying his rightful service to the Most High that has been leading us to where we are today, the judgment of God upon the nations. There is a defection of the heart of man to seek for the living God, to live lives that are pleasing in his sight, to glorify his holy name in all that they do. We have indeed all gone astray. My friends, again, I do not mean to be tedious, 
or repetitive in this message. But as you have heard me say many times now, what is approaching cannot be stopped. The wrath of God upon this entire planet is approaching. Nearly every living thing will die, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. There have always been those throughout history that the Lord our God has given over to a reprobate mind, but in these days that number has grown exponentially. There are few who honor the Lord for who he is, the creator and sustainer of all life. Matthew 24 12 stands as a visible truth in these days, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Evil is abounding. The hedges have been lowered, and we are called to warn all who will listen. Many have been abandoned to wickedness, but not all. If you have been crucified with the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are to stand for him in these evil days. You are the elect. You have been chosen. You will spend eternity in the presence of the Most High God. You are loved beyond measure. There is a verse I would ask you to memorize, to take to heart, to apply in your lives. It is Psalms 94, 16, who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. We are in the beginnings of sorrows. The great and terrible day of the Lord is approaching. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days he shall consider it. We, my friends, will not be here in those latter days, the days of Jacob's troubles, but there are people that will be. The Lord may be placing them in your path this very day. Speak with them in love. Tell them of the one who gave his life for them. Tell them of the need to repent and call upon him for the salvation of their soul. If the Almighty calls you to suffer, suffer for his glory. If he calls you to die, die for his glory. Until the moment that he calls you home, live each day for his glory. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it.